In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set a custom pivot or anchor point in Unity. We will use this to create squash and stretch animations for the player. We will set up the animation logic in an animator and trigger the animations with code. Let's get started. Regardless of your platformer implementation, um, this squash and stretch approach should work for you. This is the platformer project that I made in my Unity input system tutorial and my little guy can move left and right and he can jump and his ground detection is done by a trigger on a box collider. All you really need, the only real requirement for the tutorial is I guess you should be using a sprite renderer and if your sprite renderer is animated so you have an animator alongside your sprite renderer that's fine it will still work and I guess you just need a jump function because that's how we'll trigger the squash and stretch animations. To get started, we need to understand that the squash and stretch is done by scaling. That would be like a squash, and this would be a stretch. It is scaling around the center point, and we don't want to scale around the center point. We want to scale around a position at the bottom of the character's feet in the middle. And the reason we want to do that is, well, everything happens from the ground effectively. But we can't move an anchor point to the feet of the character. Unity doesn't have that. But what we can do is make child objects and move the child objects around in order to pivot around specific points. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the sprite renderer from the player logic. So I'm gonna right click our player. I'm gonna create an empty object. I'm gonna call the empty object uh, sprite and I'm gonna go back to player I'm going to right click my sprite renderer, copy component, go to sprite, I'm going to paste this in here and I'm going to go back to player and remove the sprite renderer. So now our sprite renderer is in a new object that is parented to the player. That's all well and good, but obviously we scale this, it's um, scaling around the center and what we need to do is create another child object of the player. And what we're going to do is call this, I guess we could call it anchor. Right? That's effectively what we're trying to do. And I'm going to go to the move tool over here. I'm going to drag, press control and drag this move tool to the bottom of the player. So that will act as our pivot. And for that, for the sprite to scale around the anchor, we drag the sprite into the anchor. So the sprite is parented to the anchor. Now, when you click anchor here with a sprite in it, some of you will have your move position, your move tool here. And some of you will have your move position, uh, move tool positioning here. To fix this, you go over here, you click it, change it to pivot, and the anchor will be where we expect it to be. And now we can actually scale it around the anchor. We're scaling the sprite around the anchor. So that would be a squash. This would be a stretch. And now I think it's time to create animations. But what do we animate here? We don't actually affect the sprite renderer. I'm going to minimize anchor so I don't accidentally mess with sprite. In Anchor, I'm going to add an animated component. We don't actually have animations or a folder for animations yet. I'm going to create a folder for animations. I'm going to right click, create. You won't be able to see it. I think it's off the recording, but I'm going to scroll all the way down to animator controller. I'm going to call it squash and stretch. Then I'm going to go to my anchor. I'm going to drag squash and stretch the animation controller into the animator component. Let's double click this guy. That should open an animator. Otherwise, you can open up the animator by going window, animation, animator. There's nothing in there. We need to create animation clips. So what we will do, window, animation, animation again. And here, because I have the anchor selected, to begin animating anchor, create an animation clip. We just smack create over here. Now I'm going to go to the folder and I'm going to call this animation jump. Right, what are we animating again? We are, of course, animating the scale of this anchor. We expand this, and here's my little trick for squashing and stretching. So this is the jump. So it's actually going to snap to a squashed position, and then to perform the jump, it's going to quickly move into a stretched position. So right at the beginning here, I want it to be wide on the x-axis. I'm going to add 0.2 to the x scale and to maintain the volume to the character because I put 0.2 on the x scale I'm going to minus 0.2 on the y scale so that becomes 0.8 and then I'm going to move forward by maybe 0.5 and I'm going to change the x scale to 0.8 and the y scale to 
1.2. So that's my squash to stretch position. Uh, this animation is really long. I'm gonna drag this end part maybe all the way to 0.2. Yeah, just so that it's slow and you can see it. And then I'm gonna move my stretched keyframes all the way to the middle. And that's a squishy boy. That's a squashy squishy boy. So now we have an animation. If we look in the animator, let me zoom into this. I don't want the animator to immediately go to jump. So what can I immediately make it go to? Well, I can create a new animation by going back to the animation tab. I click over here where it says jump. That's the current animation. And then I can say create new clip. I'm going to make an idle animation. Add a property. I think I will just keyframe scale. I'll drag it all the way down. Now I have an idle animation. I will click idle animation over here. And we see that it's looped over here. I think idle should be looped. And then if I go to jump, it's also looped. And I don't believe I want it looped. So I'm actually going to switch the jump animation loop off. If I go to the animator panel again, now I have a new animation in here. I want idle to be the entry state. So I'm right clicking it set as layer default state. But how will we get to our jump state? Well, I think from any state you can jump. So I will right click on any state, make transition, and go to jump. These are parameters. So how are we going to trigger the jump? Well, I'm going to use, funnily enough, something called a trigger and I'm going to name the trigger jump. There's no requirement for this. That's entry immediately to idle, but from any state to go to jump, for example, if it was in idle and then it went to jump, this transition needs a condition. I've clicked the transition, go over here in the inspector under conditions, add one, and it defaults to jump because there's only one. So far, we've just made some animations and then done some logic in the animator for anchor. What we're going to do now is be able to trigger these animations. So if we open up the script and in the player controller at the tippity top, I am going to write public animator squash stretch animator. Go back into Unity, wait for it to compile, hit player, go to your player, go to the player controller, and you can see that the squash stretch animator has not been assigned. It is in anchor. So I will drag anchor into this and that is the animator in anchor. Go back to the script. Let's scroll down to jump and in here, well, we have referenced the animator and then I will write set, open close brackets, speech marks, jump. And that should trigger our jump animation. I'm just gonna press play. It appears to be playing twice. So I actually do know why it's calling this twice. If you followed my Unity input system tutorial, you will have this bug too. And it's because um, the Unity input system, when you define something as a button, it will call it twice. It will call it once when it started or performed. And that's when you press down the space bar and it will call it again when it's canceled, when the action is canceled. And that's when you let go of the space bar. So how can we prevent this? Well, the parameter here is empty. If we copy this one from our movement code, we can do an input action callback context context, and we can check the context of the action that has been triggered. So what I can do is if context dot cancelled, so we're letting go of the spacebar, we can return out of the function. The second mistake I made was this piece of code here. Um, this should happen only if it's grounded. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to add some braces to this if is grounded part of the code. And I'm going to stick it right here. One more thing, because we changed the parameter of the jump function, we actually have to go to our player input component in the player, open up events, open up player action map. And then here you will see that it says missing player controller dot jump. And that's because we've changed what the function looks like. Move this over so you can see, I click in here, I go to the player controller and jump is actually at the top this time. And that's because we added that parameter. And then what should happen is that when you press space, you should see a squash and stretch. So now we have a character that does a squash and stretch on a jump. But what about a squash on a landing to make him look like a rubbery boy? Well, we basically repeat the same things again. And I'll go through it again so that um, it's clear. Let's come out of play mode. Let's go into the animator. We have this configuration. So what we want is another animation called land. In fact, let's add the parameter for land. 
right here or landing. That's fine by me. Go to the animation panel. Can't make anything. That's because we need to focus on the anchor game object. Let's click this. Create a new clip. We shall create a landing animation. And the landing animation, we will add a property. We're going to add scale. Let's bring it down to 0.2. And at the beginning, you're probably at the idle effectively. So let's go to halfway. We are squashing. So wider on the x-axis, 1.2, and shorter on the y-axis, 0.8. Yep, that seems fine to me. Let's go to the animator. We have a new landing node, and what we will do is create a new transition between make uh, any state and landing. We're going to click the transition. The condition is landing. Now I think we go to the code, and we go to the is grounded code. Hold on, let me just find it. Ah, yes, I do it here. Basically, on trigger enter 2D, um, we would extend this if statement, trigger the animation out of the animator. So our squash stretch animator, set trigger, landing. Yep. And I've just remembered. Let's go back to Unity. Let's select our landing animation. We don't want this to loop. Let's see how it behaves. Okay. It is actually working quite well. This is a squash and stretch right here. In fact, I feel like it could be squishier. So I'm going to go into the animation and right here, I'm going to actually put 1.4 and 0.6. Yeah, maybe I will slow it down. But I think 30 will be too much. We'll try 30. Oh, 30 kind of is feeling my vibe. What about for landing? We'll try the samples at 30. That is a slow squish. Look at this squishy little boy go. Look at him. He looks like jelly. The samples at 30 makes it look so much smoother. And you could use this for anything. Interactable objects. Anything. Not just a player. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing.